So many of you have been asking for a module 24 update to my Paladin tank. And well, here it is. Mainly, I've only changed a very few things. And that is from my module 23 build and thus hesitant to make this build as I really haven't changed much. Now, right now we have a setup for, let's say, maximum survivability. Now, normally what I do is instead of having the Tiamat set, which again, you would use for survivability. If you're running into content where you might die a lot, you can use this, but I recommend using the Mithalar set instead that you get from Dragonbone Veil. You complete that and you get the Mithalar set. And the reason is it's an extra hit, which allows you to maintain threat against your enemy just by using your at will which means you'll be able to switch templar's wrath over to like sacred weapon and not use any power which consumes divinity allowing you to use your divine champion as much as possible for that survivability blocking half the damage increasing your maximum stamina 60 percent etc and so when you see my build, I would highly recommend switching to Mithalar instead of the Tiamat set. And additionally, if you want to run a support companion like the Tutor, the Dreads, Spine Devil, or something else, you can instead of the Augment, but again, you're sacrificing survivability for team support. And that decision is yours. If you are to do that, switching to like an active companion, then you would want to switch the armor piece over to the Forest Guardian one to give you back that awareness when you're in a team. That is very simply the only changes I would make. Again, switching to Mithalar for extra threat if you need it. I found it very useful, again, for sustaining aggro just with Oat Strike and the armor piece if you're not using, let's say, an augment, which I generally do, unless the healer doesn't have, like, Tutor, which everybody wants the DPS these days. Otherwise, it's this setup, and we can see our powers, and the main change we've made is switching over to Justicar's Bulwark, because again, with that meta of only using Templar's Wrath at the beginning of the fight for that threat, as you can see, we do here, get up to the boss, get combat advantage, and then go use like your three to four Templar's Wrath, straining all your divinity amongst the artifact call. And from there, you can switch to Sacred Weapon and not use that divinity anymore for threat. You might want to run then as we do the Threat Ring. And that gives you the ability to gain the threat on all these enemies just by moving around a bit. Additionally, you can easily sustain threat on them just by hitting them with your at will. You don't always have to run around like a headless chicken. And to be honest, that's about it for the changes. You can get upgraded companion gear of exactly these pieces from the new campaign, North Dark Reaches. Bit of a grind. At the moment, I haven't bothered because the item level gain is so minimal. And especially on a tank, it's pretty unnoticeable. But you would want these brilliant diamond belts. Just a bit more item level and it will make up for the stats. It's not like you gain any more stats. And you can see they're a pure upgrade from the defense and awareness that you get from these ones. And so let's quickly go over the different sections as I normally do in a build. And so we begin with powers. Let's give a bit of an explanation. Again, we're using Ultra Strike just all the time. You want to use it in between using your shield. So you like hold down Oat Strike. So you're attacking like this, but then you can also spam your shield in between like this. And it gives you the ability to gain your daily back really quick. Have a look at this. For example, we cast our Absolution and our daily, and then we go swinging with our Atwell. And with this build, with stacking a bit of action points, you can see we can get our daily pack pretty much before even our encounter power comes off cooldown. You can see right there, within 20 seconds, we're getting our daily back again. Of course, you will need to have a target you can always attack. Now, it will also depend on the target you're, you're fighting. For example, this first boss here is pretty brutal. And if you don't block her massive hit, you could end up dying. So using that at will block spamming can make it a little bit hard to time the block. So you need to be a little bit aware of that. But it really gives you a massive amount of survivability by being able to cast that daily power so much more often and being able to use that divinity on that tab stance to be able to automatically block attacks and give you damage resistance and a bit of heal. And I use it, especially in the first boss, 
when like you know you're going to get hit by her big hit soon enough there you go and she deals only 200k on that and so it's oath strike all the way with its increased threat i just have radiant slam because i'm not used to not playing with it but you could have shielding strike if you're far ahead of the threat you can see that here like people are in yellow you're generally okay to let's say use shielding strike to gain a bit more stamina our encounters again it's templar's wrath for that beginning of the fight you really need it to get ahead of the DPS, especially when they have an artifact call from the beginning. You need to be casting it like three or four times and you can see everybody gets thrown into the green and that's great. You easily have the threat lead on them. Just be aware they can catch up and make sure you keep attacking with your at will as much as possible. And of course, then once that first part of the fight is over, you can switch over to Sacred Weapon instead. And then you want to run like Absolution for the added survivability. Again, what you can do is have Absolution up while you don't have your daily. So cast that. It only lasts eight seconds, but gives you that added survivability. And you can see we can nearly get our daily power back by the time our absolution is over, then go and cast that daily power again. And then we can wait for the daily power to disappear. Just keep in mind the bubble will disappear sooner than the actual effect. You can see the effect up on the top left there. You see like the icon of that daily power. When that runs out, you use like your absolution. And then you can see when you get your daily power back again, you can feel free to cast that. Of course, it will depend on the fight, the timing, and when you actually need that added survivability. But that daily power is massive for survivability. But we'll go to that in a second. And thirdly, I use Binding Oath as my third encounter power. It's massive. I would absolutely take it over Absolution any day if I had to choose between the two because it regenerates your stamina, your shield, your guard meter so quickly. And the 22 second cooldown is long, but the duration of it is 12 seconds. So you're only going to be like 10 seconds without it. And then you have your daily powers. And I'm primarily using Divine Protector. If you're in a party where the... DPS are particularly strong and you need extra threat. Use Divine Judgment for the extra damage and the damaging hit with Magic Core Bite. But generally, it's okay with Divine Protector for your survivability plus the Magic Core Bite to maintain that threat, especially with this with this daily spam every 20 seconds. Mechanics, it's the usual as you'd have with the Paladin. For new players out there, well, you basically use your shift power on PC anyway. It's your block just to block incoming attacks and you want to do it whenever the enemy is going to hit you with something that's at least big and the rest the healer can heal you up. And then you have like your tab power, which is this right here. You go all glowy and as long as you have this feat down here on yielding champion you will block half of the incoming damage and you can also attack while in this stance which is great so you can still get your daily power back nice and quick while in this stance you will drain a bit of your divinity over time however and just keep aware of that meter this is your divinity meter here so you can only have it active for so long but you can see once there i put my daily and then i kind of alternate between the two a very nice thing as well is you can't be pushed around while in that effect you gain control immunity and of course while in that tab stance or divine champion you can block as well like this and then you create like a cone behind you and anything in that cone you can see will gain like 10 percent damage reduction will get a bit healed and that's it Class features, again, it's Composure and Aura of Wrath. If you need survivability, like extra deflect, you could take Aura of Protection. Or if you need a bit of extra threat, you could take Aura of Vengeance, especially if everybody's getting hit a bit. And the feats, you can see it's all just up here. Again, we switched to Justicar's Bulwark because of the ability to not use any power which uses Divinity, as this one would benefit from throughout the fight. And so you gain a bit more Divinity by blocking a bit more. And then, yeah just shield the gods for survivability you can if you want to do team support with helping your allies he get healed more sheltering light is great if you're running content that's like easier and the healer needs help healing everybody this is an awesome power now when you do run against ads so lots of groups of enemies i generally switch instead of like absolution we have our burning light just here and we have our Templar's Wrath. And Templar's Wrath, aggro against everything and stun with the burning light. Just really useful. 
combine it with burning vengeance you don't have to charge it up for maximum damage just be aware that if you do die you will lose all the threat against your enemy and so you need a power like vow of enmity which places you on top of the threat list immediately to basically obtain that threat back to make sure the enemy is attacking you the, that boss so if you're running content where you might die vow of enmity is like required for that to get the threat back because if you're halfway through a fight you die you lose all aggro and if the dps don't die as well then they're gonna have aggro and have way more effective damage than you and you'll never catch up by using something like Templar's Wrath or your at will and so you need something to put you on top of the threat list and so you can either die and then right click here and switch to your valve enmity or you can just always use it instead of your absolution yes you lose some survivability but on the flip side, it's not as punishing if you die. Basically, then you do not use Vow of Enmity like ever unless you do die. And so it's kind of annoying to have a slot there not used and only has a backup. But depending on the fight, yeah, you kind of want to be able to get that aggro back immediately when you do die. We move to the gear and you can see the setup here. Again, keep in mind, make sure to switch if you're not using an augment companion, using a team support one, switch over to the forest guardian one. And if you need the extra threat, like I would highly recommend, switch to the Mythalar set instead of this Tiamat set. Tiamat set does work. People have been saying it doesn't, but I do see my stat of my critical avoidance go up by 8%. And you do indeed obtain a bit more effectiveness by reducing the enemy's damage by 8%. Otherwise, we have the rest of the gear you can see here. Most of it's from Dragon Hunts. I still recommend running with the Masterwork set here to buff up your party, increasing your healer's effectiveness and increasing your allies' damage and also reducing the damage you take basically to everybody, 2%. Now you don't have to get these Feywood ones, you can get the Mastered ones, they should be a lot cheaper as well. They'll just have a little bit less item level and that won't matter too much on, on a tank because item level will only give you a little bit more HP and that's it. Otherwise we've got our Ring of Darkness here. I do recommend it, it comes from Hardcore Vault of Stars so you might not be able to get it, some players, as it's quite a grind, especially these days, but people do want to farm whiskers so it is feasible still to run vault of stars just getting a hardcore group might not be so easy so you might want to get like this one from mtos which has the extra defense whenever you get hit you might want to then not run an augment because of the extra stats but i would recommend to go for the ring of darkness there are other rings out there you can look up like my module 23 best tank gear and we are running then with the threat ring here as well great especially when the the boss has like some ads spawning in and otherwise it can just be annoying to have to switch out to a different loadout or different gear when you're going into bosses so I would just run it all the time then you don't have to switch your stats or anything but yeah you could run again like illustrates one for the extra defense gives a chunk of incoming healing and that's it really just the set then of your shirt and pants from your dragon huts for the modifications you can see we've got like our armor kits here of deflection defense defense and another defense for the weapons we've got of course the old strike at will enhancement and then on the offhand we've got that action point regeneration and then we've also got the deflect severity and then on our neck and waist and rings we've got just that stamina regen enchantments we have this set up right here you can see what i'm using with the artifacts that mainly give stamina regen again if you're running with the mythalar set you could have that here and that would also give like 12 percent stamina regen when on mythic along with the 1200 item level and of course as your primary you want to run a debuff artifact so something like the dragon bone blades the demogorgon the heart of the black dragon and so on i've made videos in the past going over all those team support artifacts and you really want to have one of those as your primary it's like your first go-to thing that you want to get to mythic in terms of artifacts just to support that team every 60 seconds increasing their damage against the enemy with all of my buffs active you can see my stats right here out of combat not too bad we haven't really focused much on critical avoidance might be some fights that you would want to for example 
again, within MTOS, especially that first boss, it can crit you massively. But most of the time you're okay. And especially if you always have your daily up and like your absolution up, you usually won't get one shot, especially if you're in tab just before the boss goes and uses their big shocking execution on you. You just wanna keep in mind of the timing of when she's going to do it and have that active and you'll be perfectly fine to survive any of her hits. But the stats you wanna focus on, at least what I am, is defense first, then awareness. I don't put too much into awareness because you gain like a whole 30% from having your daily up and that lasts you that 12 seconds. So yeah, it's pretty massive. And then you could afford to only have like 60% awareness. And then with your daily, you have it capped. But it's nice to get the rating up and I wouldn't focus too much on like full companions of awareness. We do want some deflect there to make use of our deflect severity. And yeah, so my priority right now is like defense to 90%, awareness to like 60%, critical avoidance, just leave it as the dump step for now and go for as much deflect and deflect severity as you can. Focusing more on the deflect severity with regards to like ratings from enchantments and so on. And hit points is like ultimately the complete last as because you'll gain a ton of it through item level anyway. For my race and ability scores, you can see we're running with the drought. And the main reason for that is team support to give the dark fire proc that on the enemy and you're reducing their defense by 5%. We combine that with like armor break and we're providing a pretty good damage buff to the group. Additionally, the draw will give us deflex severity, so we're the best class or the best role as a tank to make use of that, especially as a paladin. So you may as well go with that race if you can. As for the ability scores, it's just constitution all the way with charisma. That's it. Then we go to the companions and you may have seen it already. That's my setup. You can see we've got the golden teep crow for the awareness, the green slime for the defense, Regis and Bruner for that combined bonus there to give us the extra stats. And then we also have the Wattler there for the extra deflect. We do have a cat as our augment to give us those three ratings there. It's the extra survivability. Again, if you get good at playing a tank, you may not need to run an augment for the survivability to be able to survive, especially if you're also running with a good healer. Then we go to the mounts and you can see on our current tab, we run with like runic aura here or we run with mystic aura. Depends on what your healer's running with. If they have runic aura, run mystic aura. You're basically, it's combined team support, giving everybody a bit more stats and it's great. Then you wanna, as your mount combat power, run like the Eclipsed Lion, Swarm, or King of Spines, or the Pegasus. Those are the best four right now. In our stable, you can see what we're using there. All those insignias of Fortitude and Courage, some evasion there as well. And they just give you those stats. But the insignia bonuses themselves, we have Oppressor's Reprieve for additional heals, Forever Blessing for additional heal, Knight's Rebuke for additional heal, Barbarian's Revel Free for additional heal, and Champion's Return also for the additional heal. They all got increased in effectiveness with module 24, so I have switched out like my Gladiator's Guile to the Champion's Return from let's say module 23 build, and that just gives you that extra stamina, but additionally gives you a significant heal. There is a bit of a cooldown to it, but usually you won't drop below 50% HP all too often, of course, depending on what content and how good your healer is. And then for the callers, the main important ones is your stamina regen, your incoming healing, and your action point gain. Then we move to boons. You can see the setup here. You want like all the defensive stats, you want all the hit points, and you want your movement speed, you want your damage and damage resistance against enemy types, along with your control resistance and deflect severity. On tier five, I chose to go with stamina regen and action points. And then we went with our focused retaliation. That would give us that extra deflect and deflect severity, helping us get it near enough to the cap when that's active. Guild stronghold boons, doesn't matter in offense really, but power is like the way to go if you don't have that. And then your defense, we have, right here we have hit points. 
If you, again, you're not running with an augment, you can switch that over to like defense or awareness, depending on what ratings you need. We would have too much to use either of those. We could also use the incoming healing or we could just use hit points. And then of course in utility, you want mainly revive sickness if you're ever gonna die in the content you're running. Consumables, we can see we've got these four here. A Caprice, I still got the legacy stuff. I've got a ton of it, but the non-legacy stuff will just give 5% more deflect. And then we have the crafted potions. You can get much higher rank versions of these potions, and I would recommend them to give you more deflect rating. It'll help get that rating a bit higher and closer to the cap. You can get up to like 5,100, but they can be a bit expensive. A Fohammer's favorite elixir and some chocolate guild food. That is it. You can see on the belt items, we have a stone of health. It's uh, very recommended as a tank. Depending how good your healer is, you might be chugging through them or you might not use them at all. And then we have the action points from a wondrous dragon. You can look those up on the auction house. And then we've got a chain of scales. You could, of course, run if you need a bit more threat. The dragon fire here instead of this wondrous dragon. They look exactly the same, but the dragon fire will give you that extra damage, which is basically threat. Just the action points helps a bit better to get your daily pack nice and quickly. And overall, that is my build update. Not much has changed, to be honest. Again, just keep in mind, I regularly use Mythalai instead of the Tiamat set. Instead of the Tiamat set, again, you could use like the Dragon Scale set. This gives you the alacrity, which gives you the extra deflex severity and awareness. It's pretty good, but you might want to have like Vow of Enmity here instead, allowing you to like animation canceling it to gain the stacks. That would give you the extra stats from those stacks. Just again, for alternative gear pieces, Check out my module 23 gear list. There's also a bunch of new stuff with North Dark Reaches. Yes, I know. And I've literally just made the decision to not use any of it because it's all pretty garbage. The seal stuff, nothing's great. The boots are okay, but they're not as good as the rugged ones. Dark Maiden stuff, again, all pretty garbage for a tank. 15% threat helmet. No way going to compete with the Manticore from this helmet. And I don't need an extra 15% threat. Maybe you do. Feel free to go with it and then perhaps run the Manticore ring instead. Special thank you again to all of these channel members. We'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.